I'm Iram, Iram Mariam from uh, Brack Institute of Education Development. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Salima Qasim. I'm the CEO of Aga Khan Foundation here in Bangladesh. Uh, I started my career as a teacher, so education is uh, a passion for me. So I'm very happy to be here this afternoon with you. Hello, I'm Sedda Sajja Zaman. I'm working at BIT uh, since 2007. And last 18 years, I'm working in the ECD field. I'm working as a senior research fellow, uh, basically in the academic research and ECD programs. I'm totally involved. Thank you so much. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Amir Ibn Sharif, architect and faculty member at Department of Architecture, Brack University, and uh, advisor of PlayLab Design Consortium. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Mohammad Fouad Abdul Kayum, architect um, from Ghora Mijon. Actually, uh, we are working together as a uh, play lab design consortium. And, uh, thank you very much. Hello, <coughs> I'm Fariha Islam, a senior lecturer, Brack University. Um, I'm also working in some more projects in regard related to ECD and also taking classes. Okay, thank you all for uh, coming and joining this session. It's a workshop-based uh, session. Here uh, we will uh, have a slightly different approach. We will focus on more play, play lab, and uh, how play can contribute to child development and brain development. I'll be talking uh, very briefly because we are running out of time, uh, that how uh, play is uh, related with uh, child development. Um, so it is like a play is universal and uh, it's uh, the right of children. So irrespective of social, cultural, and uh, economic context, play is uh, all children spend time, their early childhood, uh, in uh, play. But play is not just a time pass or waste of time. It, is, it has a great potential. And uh, Dr. Betty, um, Betty Caldwell, she mentioned that like it has minimum three aspects of uh, development. That's the developing uh, their uh, me social, uh, mental development. Uh, it contributes in developing social skills and development. And it also contributes in uh, creative and imaginary ability of the child. And uh, like um, uh, Dr. Arnold Gisel, she he mentioned that uh, our mind is handmade, and it is greatly emphasizing that how um, why it is important to hand a toy to a child as soon as the child is able to handle it, manipulate it, because the, in this way the child is also developing their mind. So play is very important, and in all these areas, emotional, social, cognitive, uh, motor, all these areas can be developed through play. And in this session, you'll be uh, listening very exciting um, presentation and uh, knowledge, uh, sh uh, the sh sharing of knowledges about different activity that has been done so far in different ang angle, particularly focusing on more younger child. First thousand days of life is important, and uh, not only the older age, because in most of our uh, sessions, we have focused on school age children. These act activities are focusing more on younger children. Um, how we can actually contribute it through play uh, into their uh, development. So let's have the session for learning through play. I am calling uh, Dr. Salima Qasim. She will be presenting her experience. Thank you very much, Femida. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> can I just stand here so I can just... Uh, I wanted to begin just by thanking Iram for inviting me to speak here. Uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about um, our urban childcare project. Um, it doesn't quite fit in with the, the theme of play, but uh, because it's not the core of what we do, but it does fit in with the larger theme of the forum, which is talking about um, innovative ideas that should be scaled up, I think, anyway. Um, let's start with an audience poll. How many of you in the audience are parents? Please put up your hands. Great, and how many of you are working parents? Put up your hands. Great, so as working parents, you know how important it is to ensure that your children are safe uh, and well taken care of while you're at work. But there are many thousands of women in this country who have to make incredibly difficult choices around whether they should work to support their families or whether they leave their children in unsafe circumstances uh, with busy neighbors, with older siblings, or sometimes at home alone. 
So the premise of the Urban Child Care Project is quite simple. Along with our local partner, Folki, we run 20 community-based child care centers on a pilot basis uh, in and around Dhaka City that cater primarily to low-income working women. We provide uh, full-day daycare services. And these are um, primarily women who work in garment factories, but also those women who may be day laborers, domestic servants, women who work in the home embroidery trade, etc. Um, so the centers are located in um, catchment areas of garment factories in Mirpur, Mohammedpur, Ashulia, and Ghazipur. As I said, we work with our local partner, Fulki. And Fulki is a pioneer in women's economic empowerment, focusing primarily on uh, the garment sector. As you may already know, about 80% of the 4 million garment workers in Bangladesh are women. And there is actually a law in Bangladesh called the Factories Law that says that if you have more than 50 female employees in your factory, you must have on-site childcare facilities for their children up to the age of six years. So Fulki has worked for many years in terms of lobbying international buyers uh, to make sure that they check to see that their supplier factories have these on-site childcare centers as part of their compliance measures. And they also work with the garment factories themselves to set up the daycare centers. So they work on both the demand and the supply side. But what they were finding is having daycare centers within the garment factories themselves had a number of drawbacks. So sometimes the factory owners weren't really interested in having a whole bunch of children running around their factories. So they discouraged women from actually bringing the children, especially the older children, to work with them. Um, sometimes the space that the factories were able to provide weren't suitable and they weren't safe. And some factories had facilities all set up. So you'd have a room with a few children all set up for the buyers to come, you know, for compliance purposes only. Um, but they didn't take in all of the children that the women in their factories had. Quality was an issue more broadly. So um, most factories had one room of varying sizes uh, with one caregiver. And you know that if you're looking at children from the age of zero to six years, um, the sort of uh, caregiver child ratio has to be quite low. And um, I think most of all, the, the issue is that um, the garment factories are experts in making clothes, but they're not experts at thinking about how young children ought to be taken care of in a center, um, in a center-based environment. And we also had the women tell us, well, you know what? We don't necessarily want to bring our children to these factories. We don't think that you know, it may be safe. We don't want to transport them all the way here, so we'd rather have childcare centers near our homes. So this is why Folki came to us to say, can you help us to come up with a community-based childcare model for uh, low-income working women for children two to six years of age? And we picked two to six because obviously for children who are under two, you want them to be on the, in the on-site uh, child care centers so that they can breastfeed. Um, and for children over the age of six, you want them obviously to be in primary schools. Um, so we agreed on a model um, that required three separate rooms to ensure that the children could be split up into groups in the morning to get age and developmentally appropriate early learning activities. So we have games, we have rhymes, we have stories, um, and we have free play during the sessions as well. The curriculum had to cater to the fact uh, that the caregivers themselves had, were women from the local communities who had limited literacy levels. So um, for the younger children, they have about a grade eight education. Um, for the older group of children, the preschool children, uh, they usually are high school graduates and um, the older group also uses the national pre-primary curriculum. 
So aside from the early learning activities in the morning, there are also the usual care activities. So we have bathing, all the kids take a bath every day, feeding, napping in the afternoon. The centers charge a nominal fee of 100 tukas per month and ask the parents to provide snacks and lunch for the kids as well. We also have a parenting component uh, where parents or caregivers can learn about important issues such as nutrition, health, hygiene, uh, the importance of play, um, and things like positive discipline, because we're finding that actually the levels of violence in the homes are, are quite high as well. So to support the children's early literacy, uh, we also have a mini library in each center. So these are story books in Bangla in each center, uh, which is also open to the communities and the children and the families in and around the communities to come in to read, to take out books, to ensure that they have access to a print-rich environment. So over the last year or so, we've also been moving to a more integrated model in recognition of the fact that children actually need more than just care and early learning. Um, so we've been trying to link the children to um, health services that are already existing within the communities, including vision care, ENT, and free and subsidized uh, access to healthcare centers in and around their homes. We are also looking at how we can improve nutrition in the centers as well. Um, because we see through growth monitoring that there are high levels of stunting and malnutrition amongst the children in the centers. So one of the drawbacks of moving to a community-based model, of course, is the fact that when you run a community-based model, the, um, the uh, factories are no longer obligated to pay for childcare for their employees. So we're looking at ways in which um, we're looking at ways in which we can address the issue through uh, community philanthropy and corporate philanthropy as well, looking at CSR specifically from the garment factories themselves in and around the centers. Um, in terms of scaling up, the World Bank has recently talked about... Um, <laughs> the World Bank has recently recommended that in order for Bangladesh to meet its a goal of becoming a middle-income country, uh, it needs to get a lot more women out in the labor force. So our question is, what happens to all of their children? Um, we know what the science and the research is telling us, and that is that um, the early childhood period is the critical period for laying the foundation of all future learning behavior and health. And that's not me saying it, it's the Harvard Center on the Developing Child. So if we want a healthy, educated, and pluralist country, we need to start investing in our children right now. Thank you so much. BRAC Play Lab model. And this project is uh, going on in partnership with uh, BRAC Institute of Educational Development, BRAC University and BRAC, and also funded by the Lego Foundation. Uh, we, this, uh, this, in this project, we are catering uh, several uh, age level children. And in the first cohort, the age group is from one to three years old children. Second cohort is for the three to four years old children. And the third cohort is for the four to five years old children. And uh, there are 303 centers running at the moment in Bangladesh, uh, uh, which, among which 223, 223 uh, uh, centers are supported by Porticus, and 80 uh, centers are supported by Lego Foundation. And uh, in Bangladesh, in each center, um, the, there are 30 children. Uh, to, and to uh, facilitate them, there is only one um, play leader. And for the younger group, age group children, that is from one to three years old uh, group, there are two play leaders attending to them. And uh, for Porticus, the age group is uh, for zero to five years. And Lego, uh, the centers which are supported by Lego Foundation, the age group of the children is from three to five years. And the, there are also at present, besides Bangladesh, there are same uh, model is being replicated in Uganda and Tanzania. And there are 80 play labs 
in uh, Uganda and 80 play labs in uh, Tanzania. So uh, very briefly, I want to give you some idea about the key elements of this uh, project. The mainly, the first thing is the play-based curriculum. So play-based curriculum is actually uh, the activities are planned, you know, uh, that um, to uh, keeping in mind the several domains of a child, the developmental domains like cognitive development, physical development, language and communications development, to uh, create opportunity for the children to get involved in activities which require their brain activity, their creativity. So these are the things which are focused in the curriculum. And uh, another element, the main most important part of this uh, project is the um, play leaders. So play leaders is actually the um, adolescents or the girls, from, they are chosen from the, selected from the surrounding areas of the uh, play labs. And um, this is, they are being trained and they are uh, given uh, refresher trainings, basic trainings on how to facilitate these activities, how to deal with the children, how to deal with the parents. So um, this is another profession being created for the girls, for the adolescents. Also, uh, the parents and the community members are also an in, uh, integral part of this project. They are being involved in several uh, dimensions, like they are being um, involved in the uh, center management uh, <coughs> community, and they also they are um, the mothers, or the other family members, they are also being trained to develop materials. So my uh, colleague will uh, share with you how this material development workshops are being conducted. It's an ongoing process, part of this process, project. And uh, this is the, I think the most important part of this project is the, how the space is being utilized, how the space is being designed, a child-friendly, which means that safe and secure space for the children to freely roam about, to play and to get the opportunity to develop the different domains of a child. So my colleague in the next, right after this session, my colleague Mr. Fuad will uh, give you a detailed um, session on this. And this child-friendly space, you see that the materials are all very um, safe for the children to handle. And the space is also utilized in, inside the play lab and both outside the play lab. All the uh, things which are uh, designed in, uh, in four several corners, namely the uh, story corner, the world of imagination, that is the role play where the children are, they are free to select, choose their own uh, activities which they want to play with. And also the uh, world of color, world of uh, stories, world of music and sound. So these things are very is, um, easily available from the surrounding and also developed and some are bought uh, from the market. So these are the things, the way the play lab inside and outside the play lab are designed. Present, we are uh, working on this as a pilot project, but we have a plan to develop a business model. Actually, we are one working on it to develop a business model, keeping in mind this sustainability issue, cost effectiveness, and scalability. Also, this uh, project, this Play Lab project, has given us the opportunity to conduct a number of researches, in, uh, which, to name some of them, are the study to explore the effect of Play Lab model on cognitive, social, emotional, and language development of children aged three to five years, and parental engagement. Another one is the perception study of stakeholders about play and playfulness. Another one is uh, formative research on curriculum development. And then uh, the study on play leaders' competencies, validation of research tools, namely the age and stage-wise questionnaire for the social-emotional development, child and playfulness. And also process documentation is an ongoing uh, work which is going on. And then the child survey, which is actually this project started in 2015, and every year we um, have to conduct this survey in the locality. The last two presentations, space is a big problem, like particularly in Bangladesh, particularly in urban areas, space is a big problem where uh, you can arrange or set up a playground or like play lab. So now I am inviting um, uh, Mr. Fuad Abdul Kayum to show he, uh, how uh, in a limited space uh, play uh, activity setup can be made. Thank you. This uh, play center 
and formed a Play Lab Design Consortium last year, and uh, we are given responsibility to uh, upscale and design, redesign those uh, play centers that are already being run in this uh, country all over. So uh, the, from the department, uh, I am uh, the responsible person, and uh, the Fuad will present uh, next up from me. Uh, uh, at first, we can see some uh, examples of existing play center across Bangladesh, the condition of the buildings that, we, that, the, that BIAD already uh, took uh, their activity in. And these things are like uh, mostly uh, tin shed, CGI, corrugated tin shed buildings. And these buildings are like, we, we, have, fa we have faced in problems like uh, uh, creating more heat inside, uh, not giving enough light uh, during the daytime and not attracting the uh, children that much. So uh, the problem we have, un uh, we have underlined that uh, how to uh, do a better quality uh, situation and to create more uh, learner-friendly space for the uh, early childhood kids. We were trying to uh, find out the problem. Why, why to inter intervene or why interventing? So like uh, for the children, we, we decided to work on the climatic comforts, the health hygiene, and the mental well-being, the playfulness uh, character of the space. So, and also, we'll discuss later on, uh, like on Greenfield site, we, uh, how do we achieve the contextuality of uh, the play center in Bangladesh and also in abroad. <coughs> so at first, uh, we try to see like um, uh, on the existing site that are already being run as play center, we try to give some solution on remedial phase. And then we'll talk about uh, folk talk the, with the local crafts and things we in, engage in our play center. Then uh, local, the focal, and uh, then we'll talk a bit about uh, the beyond the borders we try to reach uh, to that, uh, those, those play center. So uh, last year we worked on uh, uh, Kolma Savar, the site in near uh, the Peri Urban area of Savar. And uh, this is the main site condition, uh, mostly like uh, CGI, like corrugated iron sheet uh, buildings, and then but there are some prospects, like you see the uh, green surroundings, like the middle leaf, uh, uh, the landscape, some bamboo plantation, soft paved areas for the children to play. Then uh, we plotted a plan, how can we uh, start doing our intervention as an architect? <clears throat> then we also uh, studied the building condition. Uh, the, there is a toilet uh, for uh, the, the skilled kids. Thanks to the landowner, uh, the house owner who uh, built this uh, toilet for the kids. Then we tried uh, to try to find out the possibilities and also some scope to work and to uh, intervene on this existing building. Because these buildings are very common in these areas because uh, uh, the BID uh, thought that this building will be taken for a certain year and then after the uh, project over timeline, and then the house owner can use this building as a uh, residential purpose to the local people. So uh, we, we are trying to study that the existing problem, like the ventilation system, as you see, that they, those are beyond our uh, kids' reach, and also the low light inside interiors, like the floor material that you see that is dark, um, there's no light enough, and also in the ceiling is a bit dark and not inviting the children to this play center that much. Then uh, we were thinking from our professional point of view, how can we enrich the situation, like uh, giving uh, uh, proper ventilation by, by using some popular method across the world, the uh, hot air uh, passing method. And then uh, we see that uh, there is a uh, sanitization zone that we have uh, seen in our previous slide that there is no uh, enough space or dry ground to get prepared to get into this uh, play center. So we are also thinking about to change the pavement of that uh, site surrounding and also we are thinking about how to incorporate daylight in the building. So uh, we are working on the uh, floor surface to change the surface giving a new look as it is a sanitation zone and also we are trying to uh, make the surface as bright as possible which can uh, uh, reduce less heat inside and also we are, uh, uh, in, we are uh, adding some elements on window which can reflect daylight inside. And also about the uh, outdoor play area, like the, the children are uh, spending most of the time in their uh, daytime. So uh, these local materials like the uh, uh, cardboard, uh, discarded cardboard made by clay, and we can use it as their play element. 
So you can see that uh, they are uh, participating uh, while uh, and, and enjoying these play elements in the outside. Also, we gave them some, you know, uh, small uh, water water pot to play with, and also the small uh, area of, you know, sands, sand bed. And this is the surrounding uh, nature that we are observing. And this, like uh, this uh, discarded and recyclable uh, uh, PVC made uh, plastic box, uh, plastic drum to use their play uh, limited outside. So uh, on, uh, on uh, the previous situation and the present situation after our intervention, and we also think about that the safety is a primary issue because the buildings are mostly situated in. Uh, lower part of the home state and there are most mostly we have found some lowlands so which are very much vulnerable for those uh, for our kids so we uh, introduce some sort of uh, sense of uh, privacy and security by using bamboo made fence which can ensure a bit of security for the uh, kids so the interior become more uh, brighter is, is, is a bit brighter than the previous one because we uh, we invited daylight by using those reflective panels, which are you have seen that the disc, uh, the, the uh, used uh, CD uh, disc of uh, our daily life, and we use this as a reflective material. And also, you have seen the PVC bottle and this sort of PET bottle. We have used every day in our life the oil oil can. Then you have seen the uh, beverage can a bottle we used uh, for shoe rack and also for the uh, floor element to uh, create the sanitation zone. The interior space you're observing is a bit uh, uh, more uh, uh, brighter, is more brightened than uh, before. We have used various colors to uh, invite kids and also to create more interesting features inside. And then later on, that uh, our, my, my previous speaker already explained about some play zones, areas we have uh, intervened inside. So my next colleague, uh, Fuad, will uh, describe the next phase of this uh, intervention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess it's, there's very less time left. So actually, I try to um, say a few of the, actually, the gist of the overall thing. So actually, at the previous phase, we just, um, so I'll be running with the slides. So actually, I'll be uh, taking maybe um, 30 seconds for, the, for this to explain. So at previous uh, uh, slides, we have seen that we are, we are trying to kind of um, find remedies for an existing structure. Then, yeah, then we had some opportunities where we actually had this uh, semi-built structure and where we could actually think upon um, to introduce some of the you know, contextual forces. And we were trying to find that how we can actually, uh, where we can find actually our inspiration uh, from uh, you know, local uh, cultures where children can be actually you know, uh, taken back to the to, to this ambience and of context and be uh, made, uh, gone through a passive learning process. So this is how it came up actually. So we could not avoid these clean sheets again because it was a part of, it was uh, already bought there by the landlords. But we had this, um, uh, you know, this is, a, uh, this is ongoing, this is the under construction phase where we could have, uh, we could actually introduce this bamboo lattice structures inspired from these local crafts and with the added color. So it's it actually kind of humanized the environment. I mean, it's kind of I mean, killed that uh, industrial look. And then uh, <coughs> you might be noticing there's one, you know, a transitional zone in between because in the previous places we didn't have any transition between outdoors and indoors. But in this, uh, I mean, these buildings of our local buildings, you'll be clearly seeing that there's a transition. So we try to took the advantage of the local morphology of building and you know uh, uh, I mean put it in our advantage of introducing a sanitization zone where outdoor play uh, area can be actually be uh, you know accessed uh, from indoor through a transitional zone and you see the textures down there on process actually it sanitizes the all these darts and things like that it also gives the extra space for child to get prepared so this is how it all turned out so then the phase three, where actually we again came back to those structures that were already built. So by this time we had few experience and we had this transition by ourselves as well. It was a good learning process. So now, at, now we are thinking that this local should be the focal actually. I mean, um, if we go to the next slide, we can see we have this brilliant, you know, contextual traditional buildings all around the different geographic conditions of Bangladesh from which you can be actually 
harnessing all those, you know, local wisdom and inspirations, and then maybe uh, implement them within the building. So we had this previous, like you say, these technical interventions, which were pretty much universal, and, but now we have these contextual forces, and then something hybrid could be actually, I mean, carved out of this. So this later, you know, developments, they've been actually something in between this, um, you know, modern and traditional uh, structures where you can see these uh, iron sheet structures could be equally, uh, you know, co aided uh, and supplemented with the technologies. At the same time, we can uh, make these spaces, I mean, from traditional morphology and enrich them. This is a brick structure again, unlike, unlike the <coughs> uh, previous structure. It also, d uh, it had its own merits and pros and cons, and it also can be actually, I mean, worked out the same way. So um, I, I'm running out of time, I guess. So yes, uh, so that's why I think it, it would have been taken a whole day to actually share our experiences. But yes, uh, so this is a phase four. Very little have been, I mean, it's shown here actually, but a very, um, you know, recent trip at Uganda. So actually now we're telling beyond the borders. So we had some very good experience, learning experiences in, in our countries. And, and something that, you know, that this, all, every place has its own merits. So actually we try to, see how children uh, interact with the existing play items there and what are the merits and what the pros and cons demerits out of the, you know, provide facilities. And then we picked up issues like previous. And uh, I would love to share all these, I mean, uh, you know, issues and our thoughts regarding this. But I guess that's for another, that lies for another day. But look at the, just look at, it's brilliant actually. I mean, it's not, uh, you, you have this strong, um, local culture, you have this beautiful nature here, and definitely the, the natural resources out there, I mean, they, they um, like, like, like here in Bangladesh, I mean, uh, worth of preserving. So this is something that actually uh, this Uganda intervention is going all about, this learnings and contextuality and the utility. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> So now I am inviting uh, Shazia uh, Zaman uh, to uh, run the workshop. Thank you, Famidapa, uh, and uh, welcome you once again in this part. And uh, I'm always very happy to say about this project, about this play lab. By this time, you know that a, a very group of people engaged in this, you know, in this play lab project. Not only uh, like the architect team, we have a global consortium group, and also like Dr. Cassie Landers for curriculum, Dr. David Byrett for the research, and also for the community. You know, so every component, every unique piece, we have different types of you know, uh, people and most importantly the people engaged in this project that is the community and parents so I will I love to talk about them and uh, in this project one is important part is uh, that is the uh, uh, children they are we know that uh, learning th through play but for the play they need play material so sometimes uh, especially for our country like this country you know purchasing the play material is very much expensive sometimes that is our mindset so in this project, what, what we are, you know, do, trying to do uh, to ch change the mindset. In this project, the parents and community, every quarter, they're gathering together. The day long, they're doing some workshop, they're preparing some material. And uh, initially, our experience was like that. It was very less. But, you know, by, by you know, when ta sometimes, you know, pass on, then we, we feel that it is a unique piece here because we want to make this project uh, cost effective and also we want to scale up. By this time in BRAC, we have 1,700, we, we, we are running the, you know, this uh, play centers. And uh, with the partnership with BRAC International and BID, we are doing this work. By this time, you have heard that. So I'm going through direct, you know, this part because we don't have that much time. I'm showing you some material here. The, you know, parents, they are preparing this type of material. This is in this doll made by the only socks. And these all are from, most of these from recycled material. That is the unique piece here. Because we don't want to uh, purchase the material. Usually the parents, they are bringing some pieces of things from those, for example, like clothes, uh, sometimes some, uh, they are piece of some papers or some clay material, leaves, some other materials they are also, uh, you know, collecting. For example, this is a elephant made by, it's not working right now, elephant ma made by uh, tissue, tissue roll, and some other, and also this is a, 
car or something with the empty bottle. So, but in the community people, they are doing a lot. We can do like that. But being a parents, we love to do that. Usually in our house, what we are doing? Do you prepare some time, some play metal for our children? Do you? What do you think? How many times you are doing? We are doing for our school, I mean, uh, for in our professional life, but sometimes we are not doing at our home for our child. Doesn't matter that child at, at my home, at my professional setup, or in my environment. But being a parent, being an adult, this is the most important task we can do. In this project, that is the unique piece. And, sorry, and the, uh, that's why just, uh, um, in this time, actually, we will do a, uh, We'll make some play material. We don't have that much time. That's why these are the sub sample material I have already shown you. Uh, I have my colleagues. Here is two play leaders here, uh, Mun, uh, Munni and Ria. They are the play leader from our centers. And we have some colleagues from BID and BRAC International. I think Mithil is there. And also BRAC USA, Devon is there. So they will help us. I'll request them to you know, uh, distribute some material in, uh, three or four tables, so that every can join here and make some metal within 10 minutes. Can you do that? Yeah. Definitely, because our parents, they are doing in our community. So I think you can do that. Uh, I'm requesting my colleagues, will you please just distribute those materials, some recycling, some paper we have. So they are distributing, I think, in four or five tables. And please join here. I'm requesting all of you to join in the first four or five tables. And just prepare whatever you like. Whatever you like, just prepare some play material. Uh, doesn't matter, that is for year one, year two, year three, year four, year children. Please come here. Please come here very first. Please. And Appa, you can also join. Please come, everybody. Come, everybody. And you can collect. We have some material there. Please collect. This is nice thing because so many years before we, we did this, right? Uh, Just 10 I, minutes. I, I think. I think we have, uh, uh, some of us have to uh, have their flight. So we can make it even shorter, five minutes. Huh? Five minutes, just have an. Yes, These are the materials you can make. Just at least one or two material. Please, please. Paper, tissue roll, whatever you want to make, something, you can make that. Whatever you like. Yeah, you banana. 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 Devon, tape is here. Because it's a huge group. You can give it to me. Just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. As we know that we have a, uh, uh, um, we have a building code of uh, accessibility for children with disability. So it will be very nice if we consider, uh, consider on that issue and if we use a mud ramp so that every children can enter and every uh, um, children can participate in the uh, building code, whatever that, that type of building. Thank you. We think that at, at one point of time, these 
children who graduate from this uh, project, they will be entering into the mainstream schools. So have you thought of any sort of linkages between those? We learned, we were collaborating, uh, we were having fun, we were enjoying, and we, we had an outcome and by the end of it. So I was wondering what or how can um, the outcome of play or assessment of play be integrated to the mainstream assessment format? Okay, thank you. Now the wrapping up part. So we have gone through a very exciting four presentations and then uh, including the workshop. So the first presentation, um, uh, Ms. Salima Qasim, she was, she showed that uh, the daycare, uh, uh, daycare model and that is focusing on all kind of development including nutritional uh, aspect as well. And it is like, uh, it is for particularly for working mother and how in a small space all these things can be provided. Um, uh, th that has been nicely presented and it is uh, something, uh, it is also um, uh, some research going on it and it will show that actually how far it is uh, improving uh, scientifically the developmental aspects of the children. And then comes the second uh, presentation where the uh, uh, lab, play lab model has been shown. Play lab model, here play has been used as uh, learning through play aspects. And here, uh, play, how play can be diversely used in um, facilitating the developmental domains of children. So that has been shown. Uh, two groups has been shown, one to three years, and then um, three to uh, six years, uh, five to six years. And that model actually, including also including parenting. Parenting is very important because uh, in our country we have seen that parent has very limi limited uh, awareness about early childhood and we are focusing on more here uh, the early childhood uh, development. So uh, thirdly, we, fa we also we have seen from our um, architect um, uh, colleagues, um, Fuad and uh, Amir, uh, Amirul, they have shown that how a simple place with the, where there is no, not enough light, airflow, anything, how those things can be converted with little innovations and using local low-cost materials, how that can be a very exciting or attractive play uh, lab. So all these things actually uh, integratedly showing that play can be incorporated in developmental aspects of children and um, it has huge potential. Thank you and now I am handing. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for listening and thank you Famidapa for moderating. So uh, this session was designed you know with a particular purpose in mind and the purpose being that we are all in a movement for early childhood development and play. So the presenters, they were all, yes, please give it a hand. We are all, we are all in a movement for early childhood development and play. Yes? yes. Louder, yes? yes? Louder, yes? yes? Yeah, that's it, okay. Number two, here there were quite a few organizations presenting. We had Aga Khan Foundation, we had ICDDRB, we had Brack University, so we are all in all this together. So it's, there are a lot of partners in this whole movement for early childhood development and play. Number two, we wanted to experience the playfulness. Did you experience it? Yes. So low, yes. yes. Did you experience playfulness? Yes. Did you experience playfulness? Yes. Okay. So we wanted to experience playfulness because with children, that's what you do. You have to engage with children in playful activities. Is playful activities, is play material simple? Is it simple to make? Is it simple to make? Is it simple to make? Can we do it? And we wanted to amplify that play does not only mean uh, that you need a toy from Newmarket, you need a toy from Uttara Shopping Center, or you need a toy from Sava Shopping Center. You can make it at home. With play, space is important. Did we get that from them? That space is important? Okay, so play is about space, play is about curriculum, play is about playfulness, play is about materials, and we can all do it, right? Yes. Can we do it? Yes. Okay, thank you. By 2.30 sharp, 
because there are a few participants who have to leave for their flights very early by three. So we will have to wrap up lunch a bit early. Uh, so I will request you all to finish up your lunch by 2.30 and head off to the auditorium. We'll be having our plenary session there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Proud of us. So this is the thing we can uh, we use it as a uh, as a cognitive development and uh, in the big bottle we can make it as a sitting chair. Thank you. Just one last